someone recommended a couple books to me. And so I started reading about mindfulness and meditation. And at the same time, I went um, for work to Johannesburg. And we studied a, a university there um, that was serving underprivileged uh, young adults around Johannesburg. And they were incorporating all of this meditation into their curriculum. And it, was, it kind of like blew my mind. They had all this really good research on how um, their students were coming in with PTSD and they were doing meditation and yoga in school and three months later their students were learning at higher levels and they were testing you know, far below what they had tested on stress tests before. And I was like, we have this problem in the U.S. and this problem with students coming to school uh, across the U.S. and it's a huge problem. And so that combined with developing my own practice around meditation um, prompted my, uh, my focus area at Stanford which was uh, working with teenagers learning to meditate and learn mindfulness. So our, our project is not directed at teenagers, but one of the interesting things that came out of working with kids, as you can see in the, the video on your right, is we have all these tools um, to help kids learn meditation. And a lot of them are, are around physical objects or uh, rhythms. And then when it comes to adulthood, we're like, you should just be able to meditate. Like, just do it. <laughs> you should definitely be able to do that with no help. And there's guided meditations, and there's groups, and things like that. But, um, but by and large, we sort of leave those um, assistive uh, methods, or technologies, maybe, uh, behind. Um, and so along with that, as you guys know, uh, adults are seeing meditation mainstream media. It's all over the place. It's people who may not have come to this you know, 10 years ago, five years ago. The research behind it is increasing. It's, it's so strong about the results that you can get from meditation. Um, and you guys are all well aware of this. You know, you can lower significant uh, negative um, health issues. You can increase incredible, um, you know, things in your brain, emotional awareness, things like that. And people want these results. And so we did this, this survey of just a, a broad um, spectrum of people across the U.S. Of, how many people currently practice meditation, and how many people want to. And there's this, we felt like there was this huge, um, this huge movement of all these people who were like, I'm kind of interested in that, and I want those results a little bit, but I don't really know how to do that. And I've tried it once or twice, and it's not really working for me. So the two things that we kept hearing from people over and over again were, one, it's hard. It's just challenging to do. And I've tried it once, and I didn't feel like I could do it. So we want to help, help people focus during meditation, just help make the experience easier and more tangible and more approachable. And second, they kept saying, I don't know if it's working. I don't know if I'm doing it right. So these are maybe people who came out in meditation looking for results and they're, you know, with technology we want data and we want results and we want effects right away. And we have a short, uh, maybe, you know, we're a little impatient that way. But, so people wanted to see that it's having an effect. So we wanted to give people confidence after a single session of meditation, after just trying it once or twice, that they're, you know, quote unquote, doing it right, that they would get those benefits that they're seeking over time. Uh, so, you know, ultimately we're, we're trying to help people build a habit and we're trying to uh, instigate behavior change, which of course is very difficult to do. So lots of prototyping, we, we wanted to go for this sort of, um, this physical object idea and give some, give people some tangible way to experience meditation. Lots of 3D printing, um, lots of clay and Play-Doh, uh, putting things in people's hands and getting reactions. Um, you know, light, vibration, playing with all these very tactile and visible cues to make the experience of meditation easier. Um, and it, it's sort of been evolving. Um, we've been playing with a lot of things, putting it in front of a lot of people. Um, and, and today we want to focus not on the physical object itself and exactly what's in there, but we have two design challenges that we'll get to. Um, but for the product itself, so to give the basics sort of a framework for hacking this, um, it's a physical object. It's something that you hold during meditation in two hands. It gives you, you know, a, a tangible object to focus your mind on. Um, and then we hope over time that as you build this habit, you pick this object up and you, you kind of sit in that position and it sort of embodies that habit that you're trying to develop. And so, you know, like any comfort object, as soon as you pick it up, 
your psychology is sort of connected to where you want to go with that. Um, and playing with rhythm, so a really gentle pulse. This object has a vibration motor in it that has this very gentle rhythm to kind of remind you to come back to that rhythm over time. So again, very tangible. Um, and finally, it has uh, biofeedback. So um, in order to give that validation to our users after a single session of, hey, that actually um, did something in your body. It had an effect on your body. And so maybe the, the, um, the effect you're looking for over time is improved problem solving, you know, or something like that. And you read about meditation, but at least we can show you that it's doing something with your body. Um, but so what we want to focus on is designing for behavior change. How do we get someone to use something like this every day? Someone who hasn't been able to develop a habit of meditation, but what's currently out there. So our first design challenge is how can a connected object, so let's just assume it's an object, let's assume it's connected, let's assume we have interesting biofeedback in that object. How can a connected object for meditation effectively and delightfully help you build a habit? So we want to move beyond like uh, notifications on your phone and things that you already see over and over every day. Can we use light? Can we use you know, visual cues? Can we use you know, uh, tangible cues? What can we use? To, uh, to build the habits in a new way. Uh, here's a bunch of fun sketches that we've been doing on this. So um, imagine an object that looks like that. What can we do? Like, let's say this is on your night table. Can it glow? Can it buzz? Can it talk to you? Like, what is, it, what is not annoying? And what can be in an intimate space like your bedroom or your living room and effectively help you build a habit? And the second design challenge that we want to hack with you guys on is what else besides a meditation habit can help people be their best self in everyday life? So going back to when I started learning about meditation, um, for me, I, I really connected with it, not just because it took me from this negative feeling of you know, feeling anxiety and, and uh, these negative emotions that the past two presentations have definitely talked about, it didn't just take me from negative to neutral, it you know, took me beyond that. And so on an everyday basis, it, I wasn't resonating with meditation just because it fixed problems. It was resonating because it helped me go beyond that. It helped me feel even better than I felt before. It helped me be happier, more well. Um, it helped me perform better in just daily life. It helped me have all these emotions like, I'm on top of my game. Like, I'm, I'm the best me right now. I'm killing it. And everyone's has those days, and how can we help people have those days more often? Um, or feel like they're in control of their world every day. So that second design challenge is around, if we step beyond meditation and assume we can help someone build a habit of meditation, what else can we do to uh, help them feel on top of their game every single day? And thinking in that sort of enhanced performance model as opposed to fixing health outcomes model, if that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, those are our two design challenges. I know I went short, so I'm, I'm in between you guys in break, so I think that's a good idea. Um, so design challenge one, design challenge two is what we really want to talk to you guys about in our hack session. Um, and we are developing this product as a, a baby stage startup, so uh, follow us. There's not a lot on any of those right now, so follow <laughs> us now, and then you will get to see our first content as it comes out. Thank you guys.